session is exciting because we, as a company at the Maze Lab, we want to figure out how to build websites with Drupal 8. We're already doing that, um, but we kind of want to define the strategy how we do it. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that Adam is joining. Um, he has a lot of great input. I'm also lead on the D8 Rules Initiative, so if you're interested in porting the rules module to Drupal 8, you can join us at the Sprint today afternoon or tomorrow. Um, we can fetch it then. All right, so hi, my name is Adam Duran. I am a senior front-end developer with 4 and one We're based out of Washington, D.C., although I live in Cologne, Germany. Um, and I found it, interestingly enough today, that uh, George Washington, for whom Washington, D.C., is named after, his ancestral home is here, right near, here in Sunderland. And um, I'm going to see if I, I don't know if I have time to go visit it, but I think that's actually kind of cool. I've been doing Drupal, uh, I was actually dragged kicking and screaming into Drupal uh, because my friend, uh, our friend Campbell showed me some markup. He wanted me to help theme and I was like, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I'm not touching that. But uh, I've since become a convert. Um, but I've been a web developer actually for over 16 years and I've done everything from, I've been a PHP developer, I've done logo design, I've done schema design, I've done a little bit of everything and I'm really at home doing front end stuff and some site building as well. Um, if you've ever heard of Coder versus Themer, um, me and this other, my friend Campbell, we're both martial artists and we did a live coding battle. Uh, it's, there's some stuff about it on, on YouTubes. It's a lot of fun um, and vaguely related to what we're doing today, but um, in case you're curious. And um, I do actually uh, practice Northern Shaolin Kung Fu, and, um, which if you, if you don't know this session, it's not even that relevant. Anyway. Um, I think it might help when you're fighting with the code and fighting with the module. When I put my fist through the monitor? Yeah. No. <laughs> so uh, we also want to know who we have in the room. So raise your hand if... It's too fast. Oh, yeah, that is you. This is you guys, right? <laughs> ah, hello. You guys know this, right? The IT crowd? Hello, IT. Did you turn it off and on again? <laughs> it's a great show. Check it out. These are like IT guys. <clears throat> Anyway, um, so raise your hand if you are a, a themer, front-end developer. You can raise your hand more than once, all right? Yeah. If you are a developer, a back-end developer, all right? If you are a site builder, all right? Project manager, E, all of the above, all right? Quite a mixed audience, right? Oh. So, yeah, it's, a, it's good. It's a good balance, I think. Um, Is there anybody really against? Any one of the other roles? Like, I'm a front ender and I really don't like to be coding at all. Are there any developers who hate theming? Really? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> anyway, no drama. So, we, um, as the title said, we're we're going to be talking about the the various approaches: the, the a coding approach, uh, site building, or a clicking approach using the UI. And also with, you know, what, what we're all very familiar with, or most of us are hopefully familiar with in Drupal 7, how to do both of those things. And then the current status of Drupal 8 and, and what's the same and what's different so that, you know, the reason I'm, I'm so interested in this uh, Form 1 doesn't do as much Drupal 8 yet, but I really wanted to wrap my head around how is my... Thought, how are my thought processes going to have to change in order to be a site builder and a front ender in Drupal 8? We all know that in Drupal 8, you know, it's built on Symfony and it's completely object oriented, and now the front end is on Twig, and we've all gone to some sessions maybe on Twig, and we kind of have a general idea of what Twig does. But how does Twig is not site building? So, what does site building look like? What does theming really start to look like in Drupal 8? Is what we're going to get to very shortly. But first, we're going to talk about our coding approach. OK, so, so as a coder, I want to have full control over the marker that's been output, right? So as a coder, I'm often embarrassed by the complexity that Drupal adds to the HTML. Um, so we want to be in control of that. Taking control, that's what that looks like. <laughs> Coders also. <laughs> may or may not, mostly may, don't want to touch the PHP. Template.php is 
you know, was a thing in Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. It's not really there in Drupal 8, is it? You have your dot theme file, and so you still have your pre-process functions, but the coder, the coding person, wants to stay away from that, so they want to... Yeah. We refer to the coder as the themer, so... <laughs> right. That's really confusing for right me, actually. Right yeah, we should, uh, maybe we should refine that. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll okay. What else? Yes. Keep calm. This is, this is the, the pure themer, doesn't want to deal with the PHP, doesn't want to see it, just twig. But we want beautiful markup. Like, you know, you, there used to be a time when site builders, you just you write your own markup, and then you drop in your inline PHP snippets to do your loop and output your stuff. Those days are, are, are long over, but we, we long, there is potential in Drupal 8 to, to have the beautiful markup. Is there anyone using the Mothership theme, for example, to strip out all the, the divs in Drupal 7? Right. Yeah. It's more clean. Beautiful markup. Oh, cats. And loves Twig because, you know, Twig is awesome. As you all know, Twigs. All right. Um, the clicking approach to manage the field display via the back end, display suite. Who uses display suite? Who uses display suite grudgingly? Begrudgingly? Who loves display suite? I kind of love it, actually. It's really cool. Um, Click all the things, because that's what you do. That's just your clicking and your formatting. You put it into features, and off it goes to your website. But you, you do it calmly. Yeah. Um, so we have heard lots of people love this place. Um, who, lo who loves using panels? Also a few. Um, what panels does is something that I, as a tech lead, don't like. but. Um, you can define your own layouts using the UI, so there's a flexible layout builder. Um, so if you go all clicking, actually you are able to build the layouts or define the layout through the backend, through the UI. Um, and export them. If it's good, yeah. Or, I don't know, the markup is really ugly, so you shouldn't do that. Um, but if you want to go full clicking, then that's your approach, right? You want to build the layout from the backend. That's also what this part initially was about. And you can even, uh, using such modules, especially in Drupal 7, panels clean markup, or clean markup panels, there's also clean markup blocks, you can actually, you can really strip out a bunch of the ugly markup, and you can apply classes that you want. You can, using, um, have any of you ever heard of Pattern Lab? Pattern Lab is a, is a, is a great tool, and uh, at Forum 1 we actually use it uh, as a front editor, I can, don't have to wait for the tech people. I can actually go in and theme things with m the markup I intend. And then there's some negotiation, but using Panels Clean Markup, I can really inject whatever classes. I can strip out almost all of the containers. I can change the pane title from an H2 to an H3. I can do all sorts of, of things to really get the markup as, as a much, much closer. It's not ideal, but it, but it, it really, there is control of the markup from the background possible if you know what tools to be using. Fences and that is another great module for that. Or in this place you can also say I want to define all how uh, which which markup elements it's going to use. Absolutely. Yeah. Run. Display Suite also does that except it's per field in a given uh, content type field. Yeah. And lastly, rule the world via panels context. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so you know in, when you're using the panels module, there's a C tools context system in place. So you can actually add relationships. So if you're using a user, you can do a relationship onto the reference uh, country that the user has selected to, be, to live in. And then from the country, uh, you can forward the country to a view. Um, so, the context, um, so the context system is really powerful in terms of um, I, I kind of go in with an object-oriented approach on how I'm building the site, how I'm assembling content together, instead of having to put that into PHP. So the site builder really has the flexibility of leveraging all the, the content structure from the back end. And this is what will in the world this panel context looks like. Anyway, so there's also, as I was saying before, the differences between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. And um, so let's do some of those. D7, our tools. PHP template, P7 
theme free process functions, panels, context, display suite. Whether or not you are much more the, the, the coding type and you want to stay away from the UI tools or vice versa, these were the tools that, as site builders, these were what were available to us. And then, oh, I forgot. And then D8, they're similar, but they're different. Right. So instead of PHP template, we have a much more exciting templating engine called Twig. We inherited that from the Symfony project. And Twig just looks much more appealing to the front-end developers uh, because they do not have to care about the PHP tags inside. Um, Twig is also really nice because it adds a security layer, so it prevents us from adding actual PHP code into the template. Or SQL. Or SQL. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. It, it, it happened. Who, who is putting queries into the template? You should not do that. We still have the theme free process functions, but they're largely for logic only. As much as possible of all the markup has been stripped out of them. Uh, therefore, what's interesting is in the Twig templates, there's still little bits of logic, uh, conditionals and loops, just to like you know list through in, in pagination, for example. So you, to say, is this my first item? If so, show the show this little first, you know, pagination thing, or one, two, three, four, five, which pages. That basic, basic logic is there, but and it's really all of the, the markup uh, is now only in the twig, not in pre-process, and that is, a I think, a, gonna be a huge victory in, in Drupal 8. Right, so if you're on the front-end side of things, uh, Drupal 8 brings a lot of improvements for twig. Um, reduced pre-process functions, so you can also adapt the menus, for example, via templates, instead of having to override mm -hmm. pre-process functions. It's a lot more efficient and looks nicer. Um, yeah, about the site building tool, uh, we already have display suite being ported. Um, panels module is not there, but we have page manager. So page manager traditionally was a part of C tools, and now it's a separate module that already exists for Drupal 8, and we already use it on production websites, so that's cool. And what it comes with is a layout plugin, separate module that allows us to export um, different layouts for display suite, for panels. Um, we still have to define them uh, using code, but maybe in the future somebody will write a flexible layout builder for the layout module and expose them. I was very, very excited to find out about this because I knew that panels did not exist yet as of Drupal 8. And so I'm thinking, yeah, sometime this fall, Drupal 8 will be released, but how am I going to build a website? How am I going to, how am I going to like put stuff on a page in any kind of useful way that a designer or a UX person gives me? I, I'd be, you know, I'd be, sorry, pardon my French, but I'd be shit out of luck. Um, and then there's uh, a the context. context, which doesn't exist as a module per se, but it's kind of in core, and we do have a context API that allows us to use context still. There are, is, we can kind of use some contexts in page manager, but not on a pane specific basis yet. Yeah, it creates, always it creates confusion because there is the C tools context and there's the context module. So the context module is not there or hasn't been started to be imported yet, uh, but the context API from C tools actually got uh, into Drupal core, so that we can already leverage. Cool. So, as you can see, there's, there's some new information, and, and for me, I, I kind of consider this a little bit of a paradigm shift. As I mentioned earlier, how, how my personal thought process as a, site, as, a, as a site builder, things are going to be changing. And at first, it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Oh my god, paradigm shift. I did actually panic. This is what happens when you panic. But I calm down. Oops. Okay. I don't know if you guys can read this. This is actually really good. In your mind's browser, clear your cache. Now delete your history. Now navigate to a blank web page. That's kind of what we have to do, right? Because we're leaving Drupal 7 behind. Maybe we have some history. But it's also good to take a new fresh look. So, we're, we're all calm now, and we can see this, that this is really an opportunity and not a problem. 
So we're going to go through four examples of stuff that you will encounter in pretty much every website you build. Simple content layout, a landing page, a default layout, which is like the simple content layout, but with a, a variation, and to embed additional content into a node. And we're going to look at it both from the coding and the clicking perspectives, and also both from the D7 and D8 perspectives. Simple content layout. Yeah. Um, so simple content layout, what is it about? Usually you go into manage display, or you use display suite in Drupal 7 to just arrange the layout of your content. Um, and that's an example that we just put up. So our website is about the Drupal 8 printers and initiatives. Um, so we're really glad to be here at this Drupal camp and see a lot of sprinters being active on getting Drupal 8 out of the door. And this is a plug for, for the, the, the sprinting going on. If, even if you've never sprinted before, uh, there are several mentors, mentors in there. Shandeep is one. Shandeep is very good at helping uh, beginners uh, you know, get your install Drupal 8 and wrap your head around it. And there's lots of very, very simple issues. If you are interested in, in Contributing to Drupal 8, being one of the, I think, over almost or over 3,000 people uh, who have contributed in small or large ways, this is the perfect opportunity. Yeah. So let's take a look. Really simple. We have a user. Uh, for the user, we display some fields. Are you a mentor? Are you in some initiatives? When did you start? Uh, and then there's some text about it. So two column layout. How we can do that. Um, yeah, so if I'm the coder, my first step is of course writing a template. So instead of writing a PHP template, I now write a Twig template. And that's how it's going to look like. So um, as you can see, instead of the PHP tags, we have the Twig markup. Um, and basically, it allows us to really cleanly access all the fields that we have in the, in the back end. Um, and it's very cleanly, this is your left and right column here. Yep. So, very easy, I have your divs, probably floated left and right, or left and left, depending on how you do it. Cool. Um, yeah, and then second step, well, if I have defined the markup, I also have to define the layout in my CSS. Uh, the problem is, or when I tried this first, um, I didn't find the style sheets tag in the, in the new info file, so it's, it's a bit different now, but you can do it. Um, so, this is how the new theme info file looks like. Uh, it's, it's a YAML structure instead of the classic info file. Um, and I have to declare a library instead of the CSS class itself. So there's a library. Um, and the library itself will then include the CSS. Um, yeah, that's it. On the other hand side, um, when I'm using display suite, uh, I have all the clicky so here in display suite, I, I selected the two column layout, and then using drag and drop, I'm just able to put the fields there wherever I want. So that's pretty neat, um, and that already works with Drupal 8. So the simple node layouts, the simple content layouts, the simple user layouts are pretty much straightforward. You can take a, a quick look here. Um, so. You can see there's Luis on my site. Uh, it looks like this. And the nice thing is, as a coder, I have just the Drupal core tools. I'm, I also have the possibility to see the markup that is being used, yeah. or to see the, the, the theme suggestion. So I don't have to install level themer. I just have to enable a flag in the, in the configuration that will then output all the debugging information that is required um, so I know which templates I have to implement. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah. And so we can see here in my theme that I have a, a template that is called user dash dash pool. And it has this markup in here um, to accomplish the task. Or on the other hand side, when I go into the backend, <clears throat> go to display suite. I can choose uh, whichever entity to to manage. 
So I'm going into the user manage display. And then when I scroll down here, I can select the layout. Um, interestingly, the, the layouts are still not yet. Um, so I don't see the layouts from, from layout plugin. I only see the display suite layout. But then when I when I select one, um, maybe I'll be able to here drag, drag the fields onto the other region. Kind of neat. Only the works Drupal 8 display speed can be the track. The comment is wrong. The code is right. Um, so the easiest would be just to look at it here. Okay, so we have two page templates. Um, one is like the generic page template, and it has all the markup in there. But we can use the tweak extend um, to define to, to define a, a region that's called block content. So in the standard page template, the block content is just empty. Then in the page front, which will extend from the from the generic page template, we override the block content, and we just add those two views that we have added as variables in the preprocess function. Now, yeah, well, what's, I think what's amazing about this is we haven't, for example, if you remember in Drupal 7, if you wanted to extend a pre, just as a right over, uh, analogy, but extend a preprocess function. You would do find the other theme function and still have the entirety of the function there and maybe change one thing, put a span around a menu item, something but you still had to add like 30 or 40 or 50 lines of code just to change one small thing. Here, we're just extending page.html.twig, populating the block content, the, the page, the block.content that's in the, in the page.html.twig. And boom, we've added what? Eight, nine lines of code, and now we've got that whole other uh, content injected. Right. So that's how it works for the themer. Uh, 
And then if you're the clicker, uh, you cannot really define landing pages using display suite. Display suite is only for managing content and stuff. Content types, nodes, nodes yeah. fields. Yeah. You could kind of start creating a content type for every landing page and manage display, but that's not really a uh, sustainable way of working. Um, you could also create a bunch of blocks and then right. place them in a custom template, but that's really not through the UI anymore, either is it? So when we install Page Manager and the Layout plugin, what we get is uh, we can define pages as we did in Drupal 7. And here we created an overview page that's the start page. <clears throat> we can see that it has some context available. Um, and it has, again, the concept of display variants. So you could actually have different displays um, based on the selection criteria. Here we just have a standard one. So we're using the, the block page with layout, uh, layout plugin integration. <coughs> and that already looks really similar to panel. So when I'm editing this, I can see that I have a top region and the bottom region. And I can add blocks here. So um, yeah, that's really neat. I'm still looking forward to the visual representation of where the regions are on the page, like Panels has now, but I guess that's lost weight for Panels. Yeah. So for landing pages, Page Manager pretty much does the job. Um, that's that. Um, let's compare the approaches that we have. So for coding, basically stays the same. When creating landing pages, um, we should do pre-process and custom templates. Uh, when we are clicking, in Drupal 7 we have Page Manager and Panels. In Drupal 8, we have currently have Page Manager and the Layout plugin. Uh, and then we are, we'll have to wait until Panels is ported to be. Currently, you're not able to place individual fields using Page Manager. You're, you're only able to place uh, entire blocks into the layout. <laughs> That's kind of a limitation that we currently have. Cool. Um, yeah, and one thing that we noted is that, um, let's, go, let's go here, when we are, when we're using only clicking tools, um, we realize that the, the first, the user view, there's no username there. So uh, one limitation of the way that Drupal Core works with this, uh, like managing display for users is that you don't see the username. So or any of the basically fields that are regarded as part of the account versus part of a, a field that was added won't show up by default. Right. So again, you you have two options. You can either go into your templates and write your own uh, user template that will output that. So I can here enable the user context template. Um, which is configured to include the username in the template itself. Because the, the username is not a field. The username is like a, just a, a property of the user that has to be printed manually. Um, and let's see if that works without clear caches. Yeah. So, clear cache here. Um, there we go. Ta -da. Now the users are outputting their names and even um, let's take a quick look. Yeah, we check if the user is a mentor, we we just output and allow. Yeah. Um, but you can also do it similarly with display suite because display suite, as we have seen it in Drupal 7, it gives you access to the notes title or to the username. Um, so that's kind of cool. Those two problems, yeah, just quickly wanted to mention them. Um, um, yeah. Good. Uh, Number three. Yeah. So default layout with variation. So sometimes you have like when you create when you work a lot with the templates, you want to have some variation. As in Drupal seven, uh, well, I can implement uh, based on the theme suggestions. I can create a page lay a uh, page template for the front page. I could create a page template for individual other pages. 
Um, but the problem is that we basically copy everything over and then we just adapt a uh, small part. Mm -hmm. If you have to then update the code, uh, you will have to update it for all the variations. Um, that's kind of a problem. And yeah, in order to visualize it, we just um, decided that, okay, on the start page, we want to have some fancy front page footer. And the fancy front page footer basically includes the default footer that is just like bar on this, um, <clears throat> on this side, but it wraps it uh, with some text before and some text after. Um, yeah, let's see how we can do that. So again, we're using the, the concept of extending templates. So we have seen that there is a generic page template. And the cool thing is that in, like you can see the page template is really, really long. It has a lot of documentation on what are the variables available. And then it will have header, it's really, really complicated. Um, dum, 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 has some sidebars. So if I would copy the whole page template to a page front template, I would have to maintain all these 300 lines of code twice, which is not a good thing. So the extending, the trivia extend, is much simpler. Exactly. So the front page template only declares I'm extending the standards template, and then it can individually override the block. And just like we talked about before with the, the, the specific block that we added in for uh, the home page to, to show that you use, you can do the same thing with the footer that you can see right here. Yeah. So we override the whole footer. And we don't even have to copy the footer markup itself, but we just declare, okay, print the parent here. So the whole footer from the, from the generic page template will be used. And we wrap it with some markup to indicate the start on the end of the front page footer. So that way- I like that outro. Intro and outro, do you guys see this? Oh yes. That's very clever, I'm, I'm a fan. And yeah, we of course using BAM syntax, so um, to make the front enders happier, uh, we declared components and then subcomponents of the markup. Cool. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> so let's recap here. Um, basically, building default layouts with variations. We have seen that a lot of coders in Drupal 7 they basically use PHP templates with some redundant code. Maybe you could also do like pre-process, where you do a before and after. Um, yeah. That would also be a possibility. I can see that. But I think the way that we see here in Twig, using the extends really allows you to don't repeat yourself, to stay dry. Um, that's cool. Yeah, no, and no pampers needed. For the clicker, you almost, you almost can't get there from here. This is... I think it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. I don't think it's... Uh, Maybe you could do like mini panels where... God, yeah. yeah. If you have ideas there, I don't know. Um, but that's kind of a use case where where I think coding wins over clicking at the current state. Okay, last example. What if you want to embed additional content, or if you want to bring in stuff into your um, node view, for example? So we have seen that simple layouts are really easy. Um, yeah, but let's let's take a look at this one. It's it's really not. Big difference, but we can see, okay, there's an initiative, it's called Front and United, it has some uh, description, and then we bring in all the participants in that initiative. So the participants, they are their own content, and the participants, they reference to the initiative. So it's not a field on the initiative itself. Um, right. So it's a related view that we kind of have to bring into the content. And the ways how to do it. Uh, well, as coding, we can do again the pre-process. We can execute the view that shows the related content. That's that's pretty much the same as we have seen it before already. But then, yeah, when you're the clicker, um, you can use just core blocks. But the whole context module situation in Drupal 6 we got because when you start throwing in blocks globally all your related contents, you potentially get so many blocks and you're not going to be able to, to manage them in a clean way anymore because the block configuration is like globally, 
But these printers, I only care about them in, in the context of the initiative being presented. Mm -hmm. So this is going to get messy. Uh, we don't like that. Um, so, well, there's a cool thing. Display suite is available. And um, we can use uh, the display suite block fields in order to specify, hey, I want this block to be available as a field. So I can say, give me the initiative sprinter and show and allow the, this block to be available as a field on the node for the content type initiative. And the, that is uh, the asterisk basically means for all view modes. Right. Which you could specify a view mode. You could say I only want it on full content, but not on teaser, for example. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where you bring in any any block that you have as a field onto um, onto the managed display of the initiative. So in display suite, you just fly that sucker right into an to your right column and boom. Uh, I did try to accomplish the same thing with Page Manager because with Page Manager we can also override dynamic routes. So when you say node slash node ID is like a dynamic route, I can also do that. Um, but it currently has some limitations because it will override the page title. Um, mm. So that's not so nice yet. It has no, there's no token support as oh. far as I have seen oh. so far. Yeah, um, so eventually, we will be able to use either display suite or panel because like I personally I don't want to use both systems at the same time. Mm -hmm. But currently it looks like display suite is more complete to show related content. Cool. So let's wrap this up here. Um, so in Drupal 7 we can invoke blocks and views from the template, which is not possible in Drupal 8 anymore. So you really encourage to use preprocess functions. Your coder. Um, if you're on the clicking side of things in Drupal 7, there's, I did a whole presentation on all the possibilities there um, blocks, entity views attached, display suite of dynamic fields, panels. Um, for Drupal 8 currently, uh, display suite block fields, I think they really work well and they make uh, the, the management really clean. Um, page manager and layout plugin is a bit limited or buggy, um, and panels also support. What did we learn today? Coding versus clicking. Each one has strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I think it's safe to say that neither one is exactly right for, for every situation. There is, as they say, there, there is more, more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> so, um, and what are the results of this? is that, you know, if you're a site builder, you might need help from a dev or from a front editor. If you're a front editor, you might need help from a site builder or a dev. Or if you're a dev, you might need help from a front editor. And, you know, heaven forbid, you might actually have to collaborate with your colleagues. It takes a team. Drupal is a very, very complicated system. Drupal 8, even more so than Drupal 7. And no one can really do it. I mean, yes, you can do it all on your own if you know how to wear many hats. But if in your, if in your firm, you're, you're a side. I'm a front developer, and I can do some site building. But if I all the heavy lifting, I might need help from a uh, from a developer. It takes a team. It takes a team. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of compromises to be made currently. So we have seen solutions based on templates, with solutions based on clicking. Um, we haven't seen any possibility to control the markup via the backend so far. So not yet. Uh, watch out for that. But I think. Um, if you want to start right now, you will find the possibilities. If you have time, I guess in a year or so, panels will also be ready-ish. Um, for, for the record, Page Manager actually does not add any extraneous markup at the moment. It's actually, I, I looked at it and I, was, I thought it was beautiful. It was, there weren't like 18 layers of divs just to wrap, you know, wrap the page. It was pretty, wrap the page. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. Right. So, teamwork. going back to teamwork. Gets the job done. So, so um, again, more recap D7 to D8. Some of it is old, some of it is new. Um, <laughs> like the TARDIS. It's, you know, something old, something new, something new, and 
There we go. So um, a lot of the knowledge transfers, um, such as the pre-process and the context and displacement. Um, I think this was also interesting for us when we were fleshing out the presentation yeah. because everyone has their own experience. We use a lot of panels. You guys use more display suite. Well, at least we have a lot too. But and, yeah. Or in different situations. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, what's really important here is that going from D7 to D8, as we're preparing for D8, I think what hopefully you've learned today is you do not have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. A lot of what you already know still applies. Um, but there are some new things we have to learn. You don't just declare a new style sheet in your .info file. You create a library, and you've got to reference it in the YAML. You've got to learn the YAML syntax. You've got to learn the Twig syntax, which is also very different. The double brackets, and that's just the beginnings of all sorts of things. The Twig can do that P3 template could not, and you know there are lots of other sessions for everything that Twig can do. Um, and there are limitations right now for, for both sides, for coding, I'm sorry, for um, both approaches, coding or, or clicking in, in Drupal 8. And um, it's definitely, until it's a much, much more mature system, you're going to be hard pressed to be able to do just the, just the coding approach or just the clicking approach. So I think we can say we learned a lot. Um, here are a few other things. Just so in case you didn't feel like you learned anything today, here's a few other little trivial tidbits. Humans share about 50% of the DNA with bananas. The average pencil can draw a mile, 35 miles long. And then a couple British ones, this is great. Pandanic Street has no keyhole. Um, is this true? <laughs> That's amazing, right? The queen washes her own dishes. Um, and Nelson's body was shipped back to England in a in brand new. Um, yeah. so, oh, folks, one more. The Beatles plan to make a Lord of the Rings film. That's great. Um, Lord of the Rings. Goes. So anyway, um, <coughs> you're now by now your brain is probably probably very full. And um, so, oh yes, it's, you learned a lot. And uh, Maisie, yeah, who wants to travel, maybe or relocate Cape Town, Austin. <laughs> They're looking for a few, uh, they're looking for talents, uh, both in project management, site building, backend. And there if you're is. like this, I think <laughs> it would be a good fit for us. So they're hiring. You can ask them later for details. And so, questions? Yes, sir. So, are there any performance differences in terms of getting coding with or clicking with, or can you be like much more performance by well, the Twig templates, they are tagged, so they are compiled to PHP, which makes them pretty fast. Um, for Page Manager, there is, so panels in 7 has some really nice caching plugins that you can write yourself or that integrate with other, uh, with other parts of the system, uh, which is not there yet. But on the other hand side, the cache tag system is really powerful, so Basically, everything that gets displayed on the website will be available as cache tags and get bubbled up so that the front page knows that it consists of an overview of sprinters and which were the sprinters to be included, or which were the criteria to be included there. Um, but what we would need to check is if Page Manager bubbles up those cache tags already. Um, like in general, the performance hit of panels was perceived to be higher than it actually was. That's at least my understanding, but I haven't seen um, studies on that. Does that help? I never know. Yes, sir. I think I was listening through my own filter, but it didn't seem like there were many things where clicking was better. No. Okay. You know, the, uh, I think, uh, at least in, in Drupal 7 stuff, it's easier to uh, if you're using any kind of continuous integration and you're, and you're moving things through code up to a ma master or stable of production, uh, I think it might, in some ways, that can be simpler if you're doing a lot of configuration in display suite and or panels. Um, so you mean, from what you've seen, coding is more appealing than clicking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, it's, I, from my perspective, it's also a personal taste. 
I am very interested in standardizing as being a tech lead at the company where we kind of need standards to be to understand how we work. Um, and I currently, uh, I'm in the fortunate situation that we that we kind of are able to plan ahead. So we already have a lot of Drupal 8 experience, um, but we haven't settled on this is the way we're going to do it uh, in Drupal. Seven, we felt really efficient with using page manager and panels, uh, panels everywhere, so panelizer, so everything was working the same way, and um, both the front enders, the site builders, the back enders, if they like, if they know how to use the tool, everyone can collaborate there. Um, but it, it's just a really, really complex field, so. It, my goal for today is not to find a decision, this is better, this is, this is less good, but to see the constraints and then make a, an informed decision where we go. I think it's also the case, it depends on who's on your team. Uh, there are going to be some people who are very competent at getting inside the code and writing code, and there's going to be plenty of people who are not. And you, maybe you don't even want them to do your code. Maybe you're like, you do the UI. You know, you, over your, maybe that's a better place, that's a better use for their skill, for a better, it's a better allocation of resources on your team, for, or maybe only for that given project. It's, there, there are definitely use cases for it. Right. Your preference, if it wants to be coding, my blessings. And you might have people on the team who aren't familiar with coding, so. Yeah. Depends if you, what kind of, uh, staging uh, deployment workflow you use, it will be easier for you to just adapt the template or it will be easier for you to to go into manage display and fix it there. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, like we were talking and Adam said like, yeah, I'm more on the themer side of things, mm -hmm. but you really love to, to specify stuff from the back end as well. I do, I do. Uh, I'm definitely a front end developer who likes, to, who likes my devs to stay the heck out of my layouts. Because they never do it right. No offense, guys. I'm very, I'm very particular because you know I'm thinking in terms of the big picture, how things will work responsibly. How, like I'm in, like I know that the like a two column part in a the left sidebar, and I know that's going to have to like drop, and if they don't have the right parents or something has to be absolutely positioned, and I know that this has to have a common parent. If if the the developer sometimes is only looking to just drop stuff into a like a panels like as they see it in the wireframe and how they manage, they, they imagine or don't imagine that it's gonna get themed, I'd rather tell them, please do it like this. And then sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. And when you mention responsive, I wanna show you something. You see the initiatives, it's a table that lists all initiatives. And just by clicking, I'm able to reduce the contents responsively. So on mobile, I only see two columns. Layout of three columns. That? So that's just a setting you've used uh, where you can specify priorities per column. Um, so clicking also has its powers today. I don't know how much code you would have to write. Hmm. Um, did you show me where you did that? Did you set a so breakpoint? The initiatives. Um, well, in the background, it has it has big breakpoints. What do you mean in the background? Um, or I don't know where the they're managed points. somewhere else. There's breakpoints yeah. that are managed. Probably in the so there's a team setting. Um, but here, I can say responsive, lower priority, higher priority, medium priority, and based on those, um, the columns would be hidden or shown. It's kind of awesome. Finally, I did not know about that. That's you could really use cool. tables again. I learned something. Good layout. Table based layout. Right. Right. No. <laughs> Uh, questions? Any more? Does this website get ready? <laughs> you wanna? You wanna? Um, what's our it? What's our budget? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, if there's nothing else, then um, thank you all very much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Um, uh, this was fun. I hope you guys had some fun, learned something, and uh, go get some lunch.